I'm Gabriela Zapata. I, I am a professor at uh, Texas A&M University. And uh, today what I'm going to do is to talk a little bit about Trajectos, which is the uh, book, the open book uh, for beginning Spanish that I developed with uh, graduate and undergraduate students at my institution. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is to share my, uh, my screen and uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about the book. So what I'm going to do is to um, talk about the book in connection. First of all, I'm going to talk about some of the key concepts that guided um, the content that we developed. Uh, these concepts that have to do with um, current second language education. Then I'll talk about a little bit of you know, uh, diversity, equity, equity, and inclusion and how we have incorporated it into the textbook. Um, and I will refer also to um, how we have worked with uh, multimodal materials and how you know, we have uh, the principles of multiliteracy, in particular, learning by design in trajectos. And finally, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my um, materials development cycle and suggestions for people who might want to, want to adapt, adapt trajectos or other open materials. So we're going to start with uh, some of the key concepts in um, language education, current language education. And I'm going to start with two, what I think are two crucial concepts uh, that we have to take into account and we took into account when we developed trajectos. First of all, um, we wanted to develop uh, content that of course was um, connected to the use of Spanish for communication. So our content was going to be the what of communication. And then of course we wanted to provide um, context and this is defined by Donato, uh, Gleason and Donato as the frame around the contents of an act of communication that allows the speech event to be understood properly, interpreted appropriately and described in a relevant and accurate fashion. So the idea is that the goal for instruction as presented by Gleason and Donato as, and as we try to incorporate in trajectos was um, to to create materials that were going to be comprehensible, minimal, full, memorable, and purposeful. And when we think of uh, materials that are going to be meaningful, uh, we, talk, we think we have the idea that um, the material has to matter to students and involve, um, must involve topics and interactions to which students can relate. And also when we talk about purposeful, we, uh, what we mean is, um, there should be a reason for student learning and a goal to achieve. So uh, language has to be used for uh, a purpose in particular, okay? So um, also, um, you know, we can summarize these ideas in, you know, the idea of knowing how, when, and why to say what to whom. So that is exactly what we wanted to do with the materials. We wanted students to be able to use materials to uh, communicate. Now, when we uh, were developing traje trajectos, what we uh, had in, uh, in mind was the idea of developing performance. So the idea that uh, trajectos was going to be used in an instructional setting. So our focus was performance and we wanted to create materials that were going to allow for students use of the L2 in the interpersonal, interpretive and presentational modes of communication. So also when we were thinking about trajectos, what we wanted to, since you know, um, the framework uh, in, that is important to me, the way uh, that, I, that I do research on, that I apply in my classes is a framework that has to do with multiliteracies. We wanted to create materials that would allow students also to grow as multiliterate uh, people. And what do we mean by that? Well, first of all, um, you know, a multiliterate person has a repertoire of literate knowledge and practices. So this person uh, is able to understand new texts and, the, and is able to understand that new texts have differing purposes, audiences, and contexts. Also, uh, the, uh, a multiliterate multi person understands how social and cultural diversity affects the way in which we communicate literate practices. Uh, also, uh, they understand and they are able to use traditional and new communication technologies. So they understand how different semiotic systems work, their, their structure, their function, and their use. And also, uh, 
they understand how to look at text and analyze them critically. So they understand how texts are related to, their, there's always a motivation behind the creation of a text. There's a reason, there's uh, the person that has created the text is in a position of power. Uh, sometimes, you know, there are voices that are heard and voices that are not heard. And so they need to learn how to understand uh, that. And we wanted to create tasks that would allow students to work uh, with particular texts and uh, be become uh, or grow as multiliterate person, people. So now we're going to talk about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and what we mean by that in Trajectos. Well, so when we talk about diversity, uh, we make reference to the multiplicity of social identities and experiences that we find in the Spanish-speaking world, but in our world in general. So this uh, has to do with race, class, gender, age, nationality, sexual orientation, religion, disability, language, region of, uh, of residence and, and uh, other aspects of uh, a person's life world. Also, when we talk about inclusion, we talk about the idea that all voices matter and everyone has a voice. And then when we talk about equity, it's the idea of providing the same opportunities for all and full participation. So when we incorporate the idea for us was to uh, uh, pay attention to diversity equity and inclusion in all our materials in order to feel our that uh, in order to create belonging for our students and also in order to create um, to reflect you know belonging in terms of you know the his, the spanish speaking world also um our goal was, of course, to when we were developing trajectos, we hoped that you know people were going to be able to use trajectos and create you know inclusive uh, educational settings. So, what do we mean by that? The idea is that you know I like this definition of inclusive uh, education through inclusive educators. Um, that is provide this definition is provided by a very recent work. Uh, by Telfer and Howley, and they say that inclusive educator, educators do what they can to counter inequity and create new social order. And so they use three broad strategies. They give all students access to a common curriculum. They place students in classrooms randomly to, uh, to assure proportional representation. And they reframe the curriculum to make room for multiple perspectives. And in Trajectos, we we thought that we would be able to do, uh, of course, the idea of you know, creating an open text that would give students access to a common curriculum. And also we wanted to uh, reframe the curriculum to make room for those multiple perspectives. So we wanted to present those multiple perspectives. And for us, so then it was crucial to uh, recognize, you know, we wanted to recognize in our, in our textbook that uh, teaching and learning are political. So we wanted to avoid othering and exoticism in our content. Uh, we wanted to address our students' needs and focus on representation in terms of, you know, L2, and, but also in terms of uh, their identity and their life work. So we wanted to foster investment, and that's why we wanted to provide, uh, like we said, you know, contextualization, meaningfulness, and purposefulness in terms of you know how the content is related to was related to our students' life work, but also you know what they could do with the language, and uh, of course we wanted to tie the L2 uh, uh, learning to their personal experience too. So when we were doing that, you know, it was important for us, and I think it's important for anyone who is developing materials to face and understand our biases. Uh, we face and uh, fears, and we also had to understand where we were coming uh, from, our positionality, and we also have to uh, take into account our privileges. And of course, I mean, uh, as a uh, the main, you know, person in the project. I, of course, I was willing to learn from um, not only the students that were going to be using Trajectos, but also from the students that collaborated uh, with me in the book. 
And of course, I mean, we were really privileged because of course we were developing an open book. And so we, we our main advantages was the affordances that are offered by uh, open education, this, this whole idea, this open world. So we were not, um, we were not dependent on a publisher, a commercial publisher. And so we were not facing censorship, which was extremely important for me. All right, so now we, I'm going to give you examples from Trajectos and what you see here is what we have on the website on you know, how we have incorporated issues of diversity, equity and inclusion, also performance-based instruction and multi So let's have a look at the topics that we address uh, in Trajectos. So we have a strong focus on local Hispanic and Latinx communities. We made an effort to um, make um, our local communities the center of, of trajectos. Also, we have a focus on race and ethnicity. Uh, we talk about, you know, we have topics uh, that have to do with linguistic diversity. Uh, we have dialects and other languages in contact with Spanish. And we also have, you know, L2 accents from the students that collaborated with us. And also in terms of inclus uh, we, um, inclusive language is very important to us. So for example, uh, something that I, I recently changed was um, the pronouns that we were using he and she for they, for example. Uh, we also have, we address ability, cultural appropriation, colonization and its effects. Uh, gender and sexual identity, poverty and discrimination, COVID-19, the effects of climate change, animal rights and activism. Uh, and in the cultural sections, we have a strong focus, like I said, on, on local and Hispanic uh, communities. So we have topics that are related to students' experiences, um, but also uh, we wanted to emphasize the contributions of local and Hispanic communities so we have, uh, we have a focus on, for example, educators such as Gloria Saldúa, Pat Mora, Tomás Rivera, Francisco Jiménez. We present the Hispanic and the Latinx family through the artist, artistic visions and cultural access. For example, we have Carmen Lomas Garza, we have uh, stories and also, um, um, you know, some of the stories that some of the, some of the authors that already um, belong to the canon, you know, uh, if, if there is a canon of uh, Hispanic Latinx um, literature, such as Gary Soto, and we have new authors such as Matt de la Peña. Uh, when we talk about urban spaces, we approach uh, urban space, spaces through our activism, focusing on murals, for example, and artists such as Barbara Carrasco, Irene Cervantes. The same when we talk about you know, music and contemporary art, we do it from a social and activism uh, perspective. So we have people like Alo Black, Rina Nunez, both of whom both are, you know, Afro Latinos, and um, we have a, a very young uh, artist, Michael Menchaca. Uh, we have very um, specific, you know, um, um, projects that have to do with activism. Uh, and then uh, when it, when it comes to you know other topics, we introduce students to things that they already know that are common in their lives, like for example taco trucks. But we approach that from the contributions of you know the local Latinx community. And when we talk about celebrations, we incorporate uh, Native American celebrations. Uh, so for example, what you see there, you know, which is the Año Nuevo Mapuche. Um, so. And so what we, we approach all these topics um, with tasks that, that um, allow students to do research, you know, to do research in their local and target communities. We have uh, tasks that have to do with um, comprehension and interpretation uh, activities um, for the analysis of multimodal materials. Students have to develop multimodal materials and they also have to reflect on and propose solutions for social problems in their communities. So here I have some examples of some of the images that we have included in Trajectos. So we have some diverse um, families. So we have, you know, families, uh, we have ability, you know, we have uh, same-sex families, we have multiracial, interracial families, and uh, we also even have, you know, animal families. Um, then we also have, for example, um, here we have um, images that have to do with activism you know, and social projects. 
We also have, again, here, when we approach sports, we approach sports, yes, but we also have, you know, uh, ability, you know, uh, and really in relation to sports, uh, we also have, you know, um, different ethnic groups. Uh, we have, um, you know, uh, we, we, We've made an effort to include, for example, Afro Latinos in in our in our content. Uh, in our approach to um, the examples, uh, when we talk about Native Americans, we have we focus on uh, language and beliefs, effects of colonialism, the role of women. Uh, we also have, you know, the effects of COVID nineteen, linguistic rights, activism, and social justice. Uh, we also um, have topics that have to do with, with the LGBTQ plus community. And what you have here is, for example, one of the videos that we have used that have to do with a uh, the development of a place for, you know, the establishment of a place for LGBTQ plus uh, uh, people in Mexico, you know, the community. Now, uh, when we, um, when students work with these multimodal materials, uh, we also, you know, make an effort to um, not only have the analysis of language, but also uh, we want students to analyze other semiotic resources. So our uh, point is to connect different modes of communication, not only language, uh, but with other tools um, in relation to the main message. So not only how language is used, but also, you know, other semiotic uh, modes. And then we also want students to critically analyze images or, or for example, music and language. Um, we also have, um, for example, when we talk about the analysis of language, we always analyze language in terms of content. You know, uh, so and then when students have to uh, create uh, uh, materials, they have to use the language, but they also have to create multimodal materials because we want to um, not only, you know, analyze language and use uh, a language using connection to form a message, but we also want students to apply uh, the, the second language creatively. And in particular, we have topics that have to do with social justice and activism. We also have a focus on dialects and languages in contact with Spanish. So we have uh, code switching, for example. Uh, we also have, you know, uh, some of the languages uh, that are in contact with Spanish. Uh, we have uh, information about different dialects of Spanish. And we also have, uh, like I said, uh, some information about inclusive Spanish. And the important thing for us is that, you know, um, we have another kind of diversity, equity and inclusion in trajectors, and this has to do with uh, the people that work with me, the students. So, like I said, you know, I have seven graduate students, six female and one male student uh, that work in trajectors, 21 undergraduate students. Uh, we also have students that were LGBTQ in our group, uh, first generation, we also had international students. And in, as part of our undergraduate students, we had 14 Latinx and Hispanic students and nine of them were first generation. Um, we also have L2 Spanish learners that were part of Trajectos. So um, for our, their participation, all undergraduate students were given academic credit uh, for their work. And, uh, and also, you know, um, they, uh, sorry, uh, uh, we had some training for them. So we, they learned about OER licenses. They learned about the framework that we use. They do research for resources. They, we immerse them in the OER world. Also, uh, they have to, you know, they, they, we have training in materials development. And so uh, we also allow them to um, uh, incorporate their own experiences and their identity in the material, in the, materials that they develop. And that have to do with their experiences, their knowledge in terms of culture, in terms of Texas. And we also allow them to incorporate their Spanish variety in the materials that they developed. So here we have some images of our collaborators. So these are our students, the students that participated that were part of our group. They gave us their photographs. They uh, recorded some of the videos. Uh, and also here we have, you know, these are all personal photographs that they share with us and gave us uh, permission to use in the textbook. 
And now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how we have uh, incorporated performance-based instruction. So we have interpretive, uh, uh, the interpretive mode of communication. So what we have here, um, so we have, for example, topics related to, um, so uh, students like worlds and social aspects, we use authentic materials. We have, we use multimodal materials. Uh, so we had, we use written text with visual elements. We had videos, um, infographics, websites, posters, and we also um, we have uh, text uh, that could be produced by students. Um, and we have pre activities and comprehension and interpretation tasks. When it comes to the interpersonal and presentational, many times we combine them. We have discussions and creative projects. Uh, or for example, students have to talk about the analyzed ads together, posters. They had to develop groupings for websites, logos, videos. They had to uh, propose uh, solutions, you know, for for social problems. So they have to do activism and research, and um, they might involve this 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 um, the, the interpersonal and presentational might involve the use of um, other multimodal uh, ensembles. So what we have here is that you know they have personal opinions. And they also have to, you know, they have to create uh, multimodal uh, materials. And we have here more information. I, I'm showing you some of how we uh, we combine both the interpretive and, and presentational. So, you know, where students had to, um, you know, not only work with videos, but they also have to uh, do research and they had to create their own, uh, for example, blueprints for video. And the final thing that I want to show you is how I um, develop the materials, my materials development cycle. Um, so what I did was, uh, first of all, you know, uh, the research part was the point of departure was students' life worlds and academic and personal needs. When we developed Trajectos, our idea was that the, um, the main um, audience for this textbook was going to be students at Texas A&M University, university students. Um, also, you know, um, what I, what I, is very important for me is uh, always to have sociocultural connections in the materials that we develop. So it's always important, important to me to know what is happening in the world, what is contemporary, what are the issues that students are interested in that are happening in students' world. And also, at, I always make a point of looking at um, materials and you know issues and then looking for the voices that are not heard. And my goal is to incorporate those voices. When it comes to the creative, um, the resources, you know, and the creative process, I look for, you know, of course, um, I develop multimodal materials, you know, and I look for multimodal materials. I develop tasks that are grounded in learning by design in the L2 vision that I presented. Um, and I also uh, look at, you know, social justice standards for guidance, for example, like the standards developed by uh, Learning for Justice. For me, it is important to focus on critical issues, social justice, uh, and also important to uh, incorporate um, existing uh, student artifacts as much as possible. And I also try to create tasks that are going to be uh, that for which students will have to students work is going to be equitable and at the same time challenging. And then uh, when it comes to tasks, uh, when I, I develop in the tasks per se, I want tasks to be meaningful, purposeful, and um, tasks that require students or, or uh, allow for students to use uh, uh, the L2 critically. Also, I put a lot of emphasis on cooperative learning. And for that, and, and I also incorporate activities that have to do with comprehension, interpretation, and also reflection. And um, when it comes to meaning making, um, the idea is to use more than one semiotic system, not just language, but that are semiotic systems as well. And my hope is that, you know, uh, students' uh, work is going to uh, result in renewable artifacts. Uh, it's going to uh, uh, give students the, um, the opportunity to be authors. 
and the opportunity to use um, L2 meaningfully and purposefully. And also, um, I hope that when students work with trajectos, uh, they will uh, reflect and feel inspired to act uh, in their world um, beyond the classroom. So perhaps, you know, just spark uh, a little, you know, uh, fuse for, you know, um, activism and or the idea of involvement in social change. And here, what I've given you is some are some references, some of the uh, the uh, uh, references, some of the, the works that I have uh, referenced. Thank you very much.